Hi guys, Jeff here from TAP. Just wanted to quickly share this uh, battery uh, job we're doing today down here in uh, Hobart. Uh, just doing a cell replacement on this Nissan Leaf. So it's the second series Nissan Leaf with a 30 kilowatt hour battery in it. Uh, we just already depowered the vehicle as per normal standard, disconnecting the 12 volt battery, uh, high voltage gloves, disconnected the service plug. We're now just starting to remove the battery pack. So once we've got it down, we'll pitch you back into the video and let you know what we're doing, when, with, determining which battery we're replacing uh, and then doing that replacement. Hi guys, Jeff here from Tata back again. We've got the battery pack out of the Nissan Leaf, so it comes directly down from the vehicles up on the hoist. We can just lower the whole battery pack. Yep. The lid's come off it, so we've disconnected the lid, which is silicon down, as well as bolted down and got it down. So the first thing we need to do is remove the battery management system. So that module sits in the side here. And the reason we remove it before we start disconnecting in the electrical is so we don't spike this. We don't want any uh, shorting happening, hopefully not at all, but we don't actually spike this with any sort of voltage. So we remove the battery management system, keep that stored away safely before we can start to work out. Now cell 60 is the faulty one in this case. We believe that to be this uh, front left hand uh, bank here. So the next step is to remove this bank of batteries and then individually test them to work out which cell has actually gone down. So once we've got that out, we'll get back to the video. Okay guys, we've got the battery pack out, so we've got the bank of batteries here, which we suspected that cell 60 was going to be into. We've isolated it off, so we're on safe working voltage now, we're less than that 60 volt DC, and now we're going to test some of these cells. So if we run through, again we know that we're going to be looking about 4 volts, so that top one, 4.03, second one down, 4.03, third one down, 4.03, fourth one down, 1 1.7 volts. So if you look there on the gauge there, 1.7 volts. There's our faulty cell, but we can go through all of them and make sure that we've still got that 4.04, so we've got 0.01 difference, 4.02, 4.03, 4.03. So again, this bank that we're looking at here, we've got the one faulty cell, which is de definitely different at 1.7 volts. All the rest, very consistent at 4.03 voltage or 0.01 difference between some of the cells. So the next, next step is to pull this bank apart, put this top plate off, separate those ones, replace that particular cell that we know is now faulty, uh, and get it back together again. So we'll show you once the battery pack's back in again, but hopefully we can get this one up and running today. Okay, back again, and we've got the battery pack all back together now. So we've got our uh, base battery back in that we had out uh, earlier. We've got our brand new battery cell, which is in the very bottom of this pack here, uh, cell 60. Uh, we've re-talked everything back up again, all the connections have been done, been double checked. So we're just about to put the lid back on this particular battery pack and back in the car. But if you have a look at the battery we took out of the car, we can wrestle Craig off it here. You can see that we've pulled the, the battery apart. It's got the cells in there, and they're called what a pouch. They call them pouches. So you can see here, there's one pouch, which is one sort of cell within the battery. There's four pouches per cell uh, of the battery, and there's two batteries or two cells in this particular case. Now, a faulty one was the one at the very bottom here on the right-hand side. So we're going to strip this down a bit further to see if we can get to the very bottom of it. But again, that's the internal design of it uh, as what they call pouches, pouch cells within the battery packs. Uh, the one we replaced. So that was the faulty one. New one's in. We'll get this back in the car and then we'll do a final wrap up with the car back together. Okay, we're back to putting the battery pack back in. So we're back up here, bolted all in. Time to reconnect these high voltage cables. Big trick is to make sure that the, you, you do the multi stages. So the one on the left here, it's clipped in and then the green clip clips further in again. So it's a two stage switch or, or, or connection pro process. Same with the main high voltage cable, slides in, black one clips all the way back in, then the blue clip's got to go in as well. So to get it undone, blue one out, black one slides out again. Just your rotating one for your low voltage cables in your CAN bus, etc. in that connection. So like any of the safety switches or main high voltage cable connections, normally two stage, same as your Toyota and your, and your Priuses, etc. hybrids, two stage safety switch, two stage switches to get these connections in as well. So some of you remember, just about to put the panels on, get this car back up and running. Okay, a final wash up on our Nissan uh, battery replacement for the Nissan Leaf that we've done here in this video. Uh, at the end of the day, we run out of time. I didn't do a final uh, video at the time, but just to give you a wash up of it. We've got the battery packer back in again. We cleared the fault codes uh, and we were looking at the live data of the batteries. Now, when we started this particular job, our voltage difference between our best cells, which were running at 4 volts or 4.03 to be exact, and our bottom one was 2,300 millivolts, so 2.3 volts, which we proved once we pulled the battery pack apart and we did those tests, 4.03, 4.03, 4.03, 1.7 .03, or 1.8. So there was our 2.3 volts uh, difference in those cells. So that uh, report we got initially was spot on. When we put the re replacement battery in, we had two. The best one we had, it was running at 3.8 volts. So we were running at 
point to a volt difference between our four volts, which is where all the other cells were, and the one we would put in there. We took the punt that we put it in there. We didn't have a charger at the time to be able to charge that up to balance it. It would have been perfect to get it to 4.03 to be exactly the same as the others and then put it in, but we didn't have time nor a charger at the time. So we put it in there and then we we're gonna take the punt that we, uh, we could put the vehicle on charge and then the charger would lift that one up uh, to be equal with the rest. We got the battery pack back in again. Initially, we got some of the functionality came back to life. Still wouldn't let us select drive in gear because that cell was still 200 millivolts and up 2,300 millivolts. Now 200 millivolts difference, 0.2 of a volt. So we decided we'd put it on charge. We put it on charge on the slow charger, the 8 amp charger for about two or three hours. We went back to the vehicle, we could now select drive. So we decided we'd take it for a decent sort of drive, not sort of, you know, 20, 30% off the state of charge of the battery pack as a whole, get it down, and then put it back on charge, an overnight charge to try and get it back up to fully charged. That enabled the car to be driven. It was driven for quite a few days. There was still a slight difference in the voltages between those cells, but we're hopeful after a couple of drive cycles and a couple of charging cycles, that ultimately that cell will come right up back into balance. So good news at the end of the day, the car got mobile again. It was the first time that car had driven for many, many months. Uh, with that replacement battery pack in there. So a lot of good learning we learned from that particular job, which we're gonna hopefully get more and more of as, as we go forward. But again, I think in the future, we'd get a, a four volt a lithium ion a battery charger, which you can buy from your J cars, etc. And we would put that battery on charge to get it up to a balance four volts to balance it with the rest of the cells before we put it in next time. But in the end, the car's back up and running and that cell balance is coming back into where it should be. So hopefully you all learned something from that particular uh, this particular job. We're gonna get a lot more of this sort of stuff coming forward, which is exciting. So if you're a TAP member, keep in tune for what we've got in plan in the future. See you next time.